right. Yeah. And with regards to transhumanism, you, you brought up something that I was thinking about uh, for a while now for uh, regarding evolution in Charles Darwin. Um, it seems to me, and this may be a silly way of thinking, but as you were stating that there's this sort of hatred for man and trying to be something greater than man, and that's the transhuman, the go beyond human, the overman, or, you know, and so it seems to me, if you're working off of that foundation of Charles Darwin's evolution, that it makes sense that man would come to a point where they would transcend their species, because in that belief system, um, you have apes, you know, primates before they were man, we, we, we evolved from primates to man. Um, and it, it, what I was thinking, I was like, so, so there would have to be some sort of trans primate at that time. Now, th these may be silly thoughts and feel free to criticize them all you want. But I, 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 I agree with you that there's this spiritual evolution that's taking place. And that, that's what's missing from the transhumanists that there, there is this evolution that's, like you were saying, I, I think that is, is coming to fruition on a conscious, on a spiritual level. And I think that that's the real journey that one goes through evolutionarily. Like, um, anyway, and so in regards to like the animal zoo that you've also referred to, I think that that's once, if that transhumanist agenda is successful, they're then going to look at humans that did, that chose not to, you know, get enhanced, if you will, as animals, the same way that we look at chimps in a zoo. And there's this fairy tale idea that I've seen people present that are very smart and they even believe in the spiritual realm. And the first person that comes to my mind is like Ben Gortzel. I've read mm -hmm. some of his work and he talks about that mm -hmm. there should be, as we evolve into these transhumans, we should allow other people not to enhance themselves. We, we should be able to all live harmoniously with one another but that to me seems to be a little naive in thinking because uh, you can't guarantee it, you know, because a certain game theory comes into play. You know, when, an, when another intelligent being is around a lesser intelligent being, you don't know what the, you don't know what's going to come of that. And typically what we see in human nature is this idea to dominate. So, um, yeah, if you want to piggyback off of that a little bit. Yeah. Um... We, we can even see it now without getting into that issue. You can see it already in relation to, say, people that are vaccinated and people that are not vaccinated. Right. We have this dichotomize. Now, this is, coming from the Irish context, this is the classic instrument of empire, to divide and rule. It's mm -hmm. always done so. And if this, there's a curious thing that, that's never sufficiently explained by transhumanists. It's the idea of why do they jump from the idea of a libertarian, anarchic individual wanting to enhance their body to an idea that everyone has to have it. Now, there's a, there's a jump. There's a, they, they jump from one to another. So they say, oh, yeah, it's to liberate. And then they, they show pictures of people uh, having their e hearing restored, which is great, for example. But that knowledge came from people who were studying the ear for thousands of years, principally, and applying mechanical means. Restoration is not enhancement. Restoration of normal expectations is not technical enhancement, which is transhumanism. That's one distinction that's made. And then they say, well, there'll be a species, a species kind of shift. Now, how is the species shift going to happen? It can only happen by imperial intervention. It can only happen by definition if it happens for a sufficiently, uh, a sufficiently wide group of people. And what they're giving away there is that really what they're anticipating or what the direction of it is, is the utilization of an intervention in the human body to make control systems work better mm -hmm. so that you're not as messy as you were before. You're more predictable, you're more limited. You don't have all the messy elements that are not mere computation so that you can work as a node, as a servant of the system of the technosphere and maybe a cast of people who will re retain some elements. They could, of course, use humans as pets or as, as Bernal said, they would be able to use the other humans as experiments uh, for human experiments. 
Uh, they could also use them for body parts for, 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 for the humans that want to have their immortality in, in some way uh, by constant transplantation, for example, of some of the other noble. Um, and especially if we don't have an idea of human dignity, that's going to happen. And there's, of course, allegations in various countries about how prisoners or body parts are used for elites. I mean, these are contemporary uh, uh, complaints and arguments. So, I mean, it's not, a, it's not a, an issue of the future. So, and then you have, well, so, so what I find strange about the evolutionary notion is they say, okay, well, it's clear we've been going on this pattern of evolution. And then they fight for a generation or two to establish this as a dominant paradigm that we evolve over a period of time. And then all of a sudden, they say, well, that means now we have to break that natural selection and intervene artificially. It doesn't go together, but it does go together if you interpret, as I would argue, these things as manifestations of the creation of an empire, the final empire, the empire of scientism, which utilizes these ideas, which can be liberating, certain or could be liberating, but effectively have the, per the, the objective of depersonalizing people, of taking away the messy bits, uh, and if you see that as well in A Clockwork Orange, the idea that you have a bad bit in you, we'll program it, we'll technically take it out of you. And they're openly saying this. They're openly saying that we will be able to re-engineer people. Uh, so it sounds like they just take the bad bits out and you'll have the good bits back. But I mean, this is, this is again a flawed idea of, of people. And we need, we have the shadow side. The shadow side is what creates a lot of it, what drives people. Often some of the great, the great people in history have been driven by negative forces, by, you know, so uh, by driven by narrow, narrow ideas, by driven by obsessiveness. So obsessiveness uh, creates the best in us and the worst of us, you know, so, so some of these things uh, go over. But uh, I don't find the, I don't find the idea uh, plausible that there's a group of people out there who really want to allow us to live as immortal beings. It, it really is when they're at the same time, argue, a lot of the same people argue that there's gross overpopulation and we have to decrease uh, the population. And this, this was even well, Huxley, because when, when Huxley was asked, he said the greatest challenge facing the earth was overpopulation. And he emphasized, uh, and that was what his brother taught. And this has been a uh, an interest of the kind of elite in, in, in the British Empire very much. There's too many people out there, you know, it's kind of dangerous. We have to control, control them. So there is this Malthusian idea that war is good, it reduces population, use your, your weaponry and, you know, practice your, your scientific, you see, does it work in reality? A Malthusian idea, a kind of Nietzschean idea, an idea of the magician, uh, and again, Arthur C. Clarke said that, you know, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Um, that idea of the magician that can control the world, that reflects, as Prospero did in, in The Tempest, that controls the environment. We have Bill Gates. So he, he, can, he can make clouds do his bidding. And Bill Gates is talking about putting stuff up in the atmosphere. Again, this is part of the mentality. There's a mentality that they can intervene in very complex systems and they will achieve results. So there is a there, there is a desire to intervene and make a technical intervention, uh, and this is noted with the with the cult of expertise as well. They believe that by a technical intervention they can solve problems, and often those interventions don't work.